Hello, we're going to continue our work in the circle, and we are looking at the different ways that we can find the equation of a circle. So in almost all questions involving finding the equation of a circle, we'll have one of these three situations. And what they're going to allow us to do is find the equations of lines that contain the center of our circle. And if we can get the equations of two lines that contain the center of our circle, and we do simultaneous equations, then where those two, where those two lines cross each other will give us the center of the circle. And once we've got the center, then we can use a point on the circle to find the radius. And those are the two core pieces of information we need for finding the equation of a circle. We need the center, center, and we need the radius. So we're going to find the center first by getting the equation of two lines that uh, go through the center, and then where they intersect gives us the coordinates of the center, and then we're going to find the radius using our distance formula. But let's look at how we can get these lines that go through the center. So the first situation we're going to talk about is when we have a tangent. And a tangent means that we have a line that just touches the circle at one point, and I've labeled that point P. We already know that the perpendicular distance from my line to the center is going to be the radius of the circle. We know that already. Now, a connected point to that is if I got the equation of this dashed line here, so the equation of that perpendicular line to L going through the point P, that's a line that contains the center of my circle. So how would I use this in practice? I'd get the slope of L I get the perpendicular of that slope, which would be the slope of my dashed line here. And then if I got the coordinates of the point P and that perpendicular slope, I'd have the equation of a line that went through the center of my circle. And if I have two of them, then I'm going to be able to do simultaneous equations to find the center of my circle. So that's one way. Another way, which is closely connected, is if we have a chord of a circle, or more commonly, if we're given two points that are on the circle. So if we get two points that are on the circle, we know as a fact of geometry that the perpendicular bisector of the chord between those two points goes through the center of my circle. So again, if I know the coordinates of A and the coordinates of B, I would get the slope of the line between A and B. I would get the perpendicular to that slope. That's going to be the slope of my dashed line. And the point that I'm going to be looking for is going to be the midpoint of AB, of the line segment AB. So the point I'm looking for on my line is the midpoint of AB, and the slope of my dashed line is going to be the perpendicular of the slope between A and B. And that give, that's another way of getting the equation of a line that goes through the center. So if I had two points on my circle and I had a tangent, I would be able to use those pieces of information to get the equations of my two dashed lines. And where they crossed each other must be the center of the circle. Now, another situation that we can run across is the one on the top right, which is where we're just straight out given the equation of a line that goes through the center. So there's relatively little work to be done there. We already have the equation of a line that goes through the center. So we can use that with either of these two other dashed lines where they cross each other would be the center. Uh, and just as an example of how you might use that, uh, we could sub in, uh, sorry, as an example of another way that you could use that, uh, we could sub in the center at minus G minus F into our equation of our line, and this is an equation that must work out. This must sum to zero, as I have written it, because minus g minus f, the center of the circle, is a point on our line n. So, restating a little bit, uh, if we can uh, get two lines that contain the center, then we do simultaneous equations to find the center, and then we find the radius using the distance formula. Or, so all of this is the geometric way of doing this. There's an algebraic approach to it as well. If we're given enough information to do any of these things, 
then we can also uh, use the general equation of the circle and we can use it by subbing in uh, different points that we know on the circle. If we know three points on the circle, we can create three equations that will involve G, F, and C, and we can sub in uh, we can sub in our values in for x and y and end up with three equations with g, f, and c, and then do three simultaneous equations with three unknowns. So sometimes this method is quicker, but it's a bit riskier because the algebra gets so messy. This is the method I will strongly recommend to you, but it's important that you know that this is a possibility as well. So that's what we need by way of introduction. These are the three different ways that we're going to have equations of lines going through the center, and the intersection of those lines is how we find the center, uh, and then we use the distance formula to get the radius. And we also have this method of creating three simultaneous uh, equations in G, F, and C. And that's what we need to always have in the back of our minds as our toolkit for finding the equations of circles.